All right, time to strip this thing down. I have to say this is my preferred method of stripping paint now. The chemical strippers they have now don't work as well as they used to. They also make a pretty big mess. This creates a lot of dust, but other than that, it's a fast, effective way to go. These sanders are about $100 on Amazon. I'll put a link below if you wanna check them out. I've had this one for a couple years now, it's still going. It's a Zoda. It's actually a 21 millimeter throw random orbital polisher. But I just put 80 grit on it and go to town. It strips really quick, clean, not too aggressive, doesn't damage the metal like some grinders might. So you might wanna check these out. They work really well. What you're looking at here is the reason we strip. Those little specks are most likely rust where it's bubbling and it's causing the primer or whatever's on there to turn loose of the surface. If you paint over that, eventually you're gonna see it. It's gonna show up. So the best thing to do is strip these things down to bare metal, deal with any problems that are under there, and bring it up from there. And that way, you know what you're working on top of. That's why you can't paint on top of old work and have any type of guarantee because you really don't know what's under there. I'm using a couple different methods here. I'm using my little belt sander to grind away some of the rust specks that I see along with my die grinder. I want to get past the rust, get down to some good metal. We don't want to take too much off, but you have to get below that rust. Once you get down to clean metal, then you can smooth it out and put some epoxy on top of it. There's a couple larger dents that I'm going to go ahead and use the stud gun and pull them out. Nothing too major on this hood, but there's still, still quite a few little dents and dings here and there that we have to take care of. Got the hood in primer. Now we'll block over it and find all the dents, fix all that. Let's take a look at what we got. I've got three coats of VP2050 on this thing. I'd stripped it down to bare metal. These spots you see like this, that's where there was a, a speck of rust and I took my grinder 
I took and ground out until the rust was gone in those spots. So that left little divots in the sheet metal. I de ate it, tried to round it out a little bit, but you can see that it's still there. No big deal. Much rather have a little spot that I gotta fix than any rust. Got his little spot in the middle where this thing was hit. I beat and banged on it on the on the bottom side and tried to get it straightened out, but I just couldn't get it to, to move much more. It's really shallow, won't take much filler there. But we'll get that taken care of. We'll get all these spots taken care of. There's a couple of kind of low areas that'll need some filler. Places like this will need a little bit of filler. There's quite a bit of material in there with just three coats of the VP2050. So you want to sand, you want to keep blocking until you start to see a little bit of metal come through just in a, a couple spots. And then you'll know you've blocked as far as you need to go. Once you start seeing metal, it's time to stop. We'll, we'll circle all our spots. So we want to put a little bit of filler on with a pencil and then we'll sand to make sure that it's going to adhere to it. Then we'll wipe those spots. I went over this before, but it's been a long time. So I'm gonna run over it real quick again. Remember, remember that you are in control of the results you get when you block, right? You're in control of how this thing sands. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So first of all, the block that you use, whatever it may be, you choose that to fit the surface that you're sanding, right? This is a big flat area. So I've got a long flat block. It's pretty stiff. Still got a little bit of flex to it, but it's Overall, it's fairly stiff. This is just a yard stick that I cut down. I know that this is gonna stay fairly stiff as I block over. It's got just enough flex that I can make it contour to the surface that I'm sanding. This is fairly flat, but at the same time, it also has a long rolling kind of shape to it. It's complex curves in some areas where it's got different things going on. So I may change my block at that point to fit that area. But overall, on something this large, I'm gonna use a large flat block. Here's a long Dura block. Dura blocks are great. This was long, pretty straight. It's got some flex to it if I need it to flex. But it's also foam. To me, foam has a little give to it. A lot of people like these because when they sand, they sand very well. It's because that little bit of movement in that foam kind of lets the sandpaper move just a little bit so that it can drop out whatever you're sanding so it doesn't clog. These blocks tend to sand well without clogging because they've got just a little bit of flex to them. When I'm in the beginning stages of getting something really straight, I don't want any give. That's why I usually use wood. It's really flat and hard with this sticky paper. There's very little room for give. Same paper on this, it's got a little bit of room to give. So I usually start out getting it super straight with something like this, usually wood. And then as I go through the process, when I do the final sanding, I may switch over to something that's got a little bit more give because I work from trying to get it super straight to nicely rounded, right? So in the end, when you prep it for paint, you wanna just slightly round everything together. It's kinda of like the body lines. You wanna keep those nice and crisp, super straight until the very end. When you prep for paint, you'll round that body line over just slightly so that it makes it look straighter than it is. That's how you get them really clean and straight. You just slightly round them. But let's get back to controlling our block. So when I take this paint paddle that's fairly stiff and I start blocking, if I put pressure in the middle of this block, just slight pressure, if I'm sanding, that's the results I get. So, sanding in the middle with pressure, even if it's distributed, one-handed sanding is really gonna concentrate in one center area. What we want is more surface contact. So we use two hands. See how much broader an area that covers? So that's the kind of control you're gonna have when you, when you block with any of these blocks. If you use a soft block, hard block, you're in control of the results you get. Let's block on. This hood curves in several different directions. So that's why you'll see me work it this way and then turn around and work it the other way 
because I've got all those different curves going on. Even in this big hood, it's really not flat. It's got curve to it in many directions. So in the center of this hood, where it's a concave surface, what I'm using, I don't know if you can tell it, this, this edge of the block is rounded over. And that allows me to get more contact with the sandpaper as I'm traveling through the sweep of that curve right there. If the stick is squared off and you wrap it, you really just have that sharp edge that's making contact. If it's rounded over, you've got a lot more surface area and it'll sand a lot better. So I can get this hood pretty straight, pretty straight with this block being the length it is. If I wanted to, I could break out a longer block. It's gonna get a little more contact surface area wise and bring all that together. So if I'm having trouble with the, with connecting the dots, so to speak, the highs and lows are not really wanting to go together. I may get something longer to try to tie them all together. A lot of it depends on the curvature of the surface. Something like this, you may do okay with it, tying everything together, you know, moving along, bringing each section together. Sometimes you gotta break out something a little longer. It all depends on the surface you're working on and what you're trying to accomplish. Let me show you this real quick. So as I'm blocking over this thing, I see this. This is bare metal, right? Once you see bare metal, it's time to stop blocking. If you've done it, if you got it nice and flat, it's time to stop. You're not gonna go any further down. You're just gonna sand away the primer around this, which is gonna create a high spot. So once you start seeing metal, that's as far as you need to block. Let me give you a couple warnings about blocking, especially on hoods. Let's look at this. So sometimes you'll get some flex, right? As we keep going back, hear that? Moves kinda of easy. This side takes a lot more to move it. This side is a little more flimsy, but it still goes back to the shape we want. Now I notice when I block over this thing, as long as I use light pressure, it doesn't move on me. If I was to use pinpoint pressure, it's gonna move. So you wanna use light pressure and pay attention to whether or not this thing's oil canning. If it is, you need to somehow fix that. There's a couple things you can do. If you notice it in the beginning when it's in, in bare steel, you might be able to heat it a little bit, cool it, and it'll stiffen up. It's not very bad. This one's not bad at all. As long as I use a, a block that spreads the pressure out, it doesn't move up and down like that. However, if you've got one that's moving a lot, you gotta figure out how to stop that. Sometimes you can put something behind it to hold it just to give it a little bit more support while you're blocking. If it was close to an edge over here, it was moving up and down, you can tap that edge a little bit and that'll, that'll firm it up. There's a few things you can do, but you just need to be aware of what's going on with the surface. If you're putting too much pressure and it's moving every time you block over it, it's never gonna be straight. One thing I see sometimes if a hood's been blasted, for one thing it's warped, but it also takes the temper out of the hood. It's just real flimsy. The metal moves around way too much. So if you're blocking over that soft metal and there's something behind it supporting it, which there will be. That supported area doesn't move when you block over it, but the area around it goes down. So as that block goes across, it cuts the high spot, the supported area, the rest of it goes down and doesn't cut. So when you let go of it and it springs back, it looks like a dent, it looks like a divot where that support is, but it's because you blocked that divot into it basically. So if this is the flat surface of the hood and behind it is the inner structure, it's got some foam or something making contact here and there. And that metal's too soft for whatever reason. When you block over it, this stays in place. This metal moves down. So you get a more of a cut on this area, on these supported areas. You get more of a cut on these supported areas than you get on this metal that moves out of the way 
So when it goes, when you quit blocking and the metal goes back in place, the surface will look like this. It'll have a divot. Because that stayed in place and you blocked. Every time you took a stroke across that thing, you cut some down, this metal moved out of the way. So if your metal is too soft or you're blocking too hard, you can create these kind of issues. Another thing, you notice this hood is not touching the stand in the middle. It's only supported on the edges, on this main piece of metal on each side. You can do it side to side, as long as there's plenty of support or front to rear. But you don't want to set the stand, you don't want to set the hood on one stand and have it pressing up in the middle of this hood because that's not how it sets on the truck. So if you just use one stand, hood is sitting on that one stand in the middle of the hood. That's not how it sets on the vehicle. On the vehicle, it's supported by the main frame of the hood, right? So if you set this thing on a stand that's pushing that metal up, you block over it, you put it on the truck, you're gonna have some waves and stuff to deal with. So it needs to set either on the vehicle or like it sets on the vehicle on the stands. I'm gonna go around and circle all the dents, any place I'm gonna put filler. Got a couple high spots here from where I did the stud welder. I'm gonna tap those down just a little bit. The reason that I put pencil around everything is because it needs to be sanded so that the filler will stick. Once you sand it, it all looks the same. It's all gonna look like this. You won't be able to see where the dents are. So you'll go around and mark where you're gonna put your filler, sand the spot, and then wipe your filler within this area. You don't want to have to wipe edge to edge filler. You really just want to fill your voids. So let's get everything marked, sanded, and put some filler on it. All right, that's it for now. We're gonna go home, let that dry. See y'all next time. Thanks for hanging out. Mm -hmm.